You want to know four tools to be able to battle interest rates, inflation, and recessionary market right now? I'm going to explain them all to you. Hi, everybody. My name is Jerome Maldonado, and I've been developing real estate. I've been buying real estate through two recessions. This is my third recession. I started this in the late 90s, and here we sit in 2022. And the big question is, how, what type of tools do I need to be able to take advantage of this recessionary market so I could be on the winning side instead of the losing side. And for most investors, they don't know that. Even for most end buyers, if you're somebody that's just going out, you're gonna acquire a property as an end buyer, you want a 30-year fixed mortgage, and you wanna know how, what tools to utilize when purchasing real estate, this is gonna be perfect for you. If you're somebody who's a long-term holder, you're purchasing real estate for Airbnb, um, arbitrage models and you're doing short-term rentals or long-term models and you're exercising the BRRRR strategy, which I've been talking to you guys about the BBRRR strategy, which is for a whole different video, you're going to want to listen to these four tools. So the first thing that most people are looking at right now and they're battling is the psychological end of what's happening in the market. And right now, psychologically, people are sitting back worried. They're going, oh my God, we're in a recession. And they're looking at 2008, not realizing that 2008 was the only recession over 100 years that we actually saw real estate values drop. But because people monetarily are looking at 2008 going, oh my goodness, real estate prices are gonna drop, not really knowing the true effects that today's market and 2008's market don't have anything in parallel with each other. In fact, the American people today have so much equity in their homes, this was non-existent in 2008. So much so, that people are willing to negotiate some out of some of that equity and give people like you a better price on your real estate. So here's how it works. People are in panic mode and it works in the fact that people are in denial right now and they sit back and go, oh my God, now I'm gonna have to give up my real estate for a deflated price, not realizing that this is a temporary monetary thing that's gonna happen just for a short period of time until inflation gets under control. And so because people are driving high on emotion right now and they have so much equity in their homes, take advantage of it. Right now, you're starting to go to Zillow, you're starting to go to Redfin, you're starting to go to Realtor.com, and you start seeing all of these reduced uh, price reductions on houses in the 700, 600, $500,000 range that you're seeing $15,000 reductions, $20,000 reductions, even as high as $50,000 price reductions on single family homes. So let's take for example, you go and you're gonna purchase a $650,000 single family home. And when you go in and purchase that home, they've already reduced the price $20,000. Now you sit back and go, if I can get this home for under $600,000, I have $50,000 worth of equity in this house and I'm at a great standpoint on my purchase. So you go in, you offer somebody $590,000 on the house. And they're sitting back knowing that their house has been on the market for 45 days, 55 days, 60 days on the market where they've had very little or no activity at all. So we take advantage of that high emotions that are running through people right now as the market contracts on, in this unprecedented, unprecedented times of inflated interest rates. And you function on their emotion and they sit back and go, well, I have enough equity in this house to just sell it. And so when they do that, they accept your sales price. Now, in 2008, that was non-existent. People were over leveraged in their houses. They had, they, were ha they had home equity lines of credit in excess of 100% equity in their homes. So there was no way they could even get out of their houses. Because the US American people today have over $28 trillion of equity in their homes, they sit back and say, I have equity standpoint in my house. Let's just sell it before things get worse. Right, And that's the way the average American person works. So if we leverage ourselves based on emotion, we can go out, leverage those emotions, and get a, de a, a decreased price on the resale of that house. Now, in the midst of doing that, the second tool that you wanna do is ask the seller for a closing credit. And some of you guys are sitting back right now wondering, what is a closing credit? Look, if you guys wanna find out what a closing credit is, smash that thumbs up button, Click below and give me a, a subscription on our YouTube channel for more content just like that. That way you're notified when content just like this comes out. Smash that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. So look, what is a closing credit from the seller? A closing credit from the seller is when you ask the seller to fund part of your closing costs. So if let's say for sake of example, you're buying that same $650,000 home. And let's say you can't get that house for less than $600,000 on a $650,000 purchase, but they're willing to go 
to 600,000 instead of the 585 that you're asking them for. Well, if you ask them, you say, okay, well, we'll take the $600,000, but we'd like a $15,000 closing credit towards our closing costs. Now, they, they, they agree to it, or sometimes you may even get the 585, they, and there's so much emotion driven on the price itself that they're not even looking at all of the logistical items that are going on in that purchase. And this is where having a good realtor really comes into play. Because if you just kind of shove this into the offer and you ask for a $15,000 closing credit towards the buyer, you being the buyer, they may oversee that. They may not even notice that they, you asked for that buyer's credit because they're so hyper-focused on that bottom line resale price so much right now that they miss 90% of what else is in the, in the uh, purchase agreement and you land up getting a $15,000 buyer's credit and you land up getting um, the house at a reduced price. Now, what that buyer's credit goes towards is our third tool. What you want to utilize that, that closing credit to for, as a buyer is you want to use that towards buying down your interest rate. It's an interest rate buy down. Now, how does that work? Typically, it takes 1% of the mortgage value to buy down your interest rates by one point. So for sake of example, if right now a 30-year fixed mortgage is at 5.64%, which is what it is today when we recorded this video, and you wanna go in and buy down two basis points, and you wanna get that down to 3.64%, which is where we were at four or five months ago, now people are sitting back going, that's a, tan that, that's a tangible interest rate that I can buy it off. Now, my monthly expenditures on my mortgage, I can afford that. So for sake of example, you go and get your pre-approval letter based on current rates today, and the house that you really desire to buy is $30,000 more expensive than you can qualify for. So most people contract and say, you know what, I, can no, I, I no longer can afford that house. But wait, can you? Because they did the pre-approval letter based on the fact that you were gonna pay current mortgage rates of 5.64%. But if you buy down that 2%, that two point buy down with the, with the $15,000 buyer's credit, because if it costs you 1% of the mortgage on a $600,000 loan, that's $12,000 that it would cost you to be able to buy that mortgage down two basis points. So now you're at 3.64% and you still have $3,000 that you can utilize towards your closing that don't even go towards your interest buy downs. So it's a win-win situation. Now that same mortgage that was gonna cost you X amount per month, you can now afford because your interest rates are backed up to where they were only four or five months ago. And so a great tool to utilize in such a market that, we, that people are running on high emotion right now. You've gotta take advantage of it, ladies and gentlemen. And so some of you guys are sitting back right now and say, okay, what's the fourth tool, Jerome? What is it? What's the fourth tool? Well, this fourth tool is a reversal of the tool I just talked about, but now for you sellers. How is an investor selling a property right now today, how do you take advantage of the emotions that are running high in buyers to, make the, to give them some ease on what's happening with them, their, their concerns and interest rates? Because if people are out looking at your homes and they wanna buy them but they just don't know how, this is where being in good communication with your broker is super important. You guys have to be in line. You guys have to be looking eye to eye. So this takes some communication from the seller as an investor or an end user and their broker. So having a competent broker right now today is super, super important. I've been talking about this for many, many months in the last couple of years. And I've talked to you guys about everybody and their grandparent, their, their realtor, their, everybody in mortgages, everybody in accounting, teachers, everybody gets into the real estate market. And this is what separates the good, the okay, and the horrible real, real estate people in the industry is right now. The sophisticated realtors will make it through this market correction. Everybody else, it'll clean house, sweep them out of the market and get them back to their normal careers. And then you can deal with the more sophisticated brokers. But having a sophisticated broker right now is more important than any other time. And the reason why is because tool number four is for you to go in and increase your selling, your, your selling price on your house just slightly and then offering your buyer a closing credit. Now. Your broker has to educate the, sell, the buyer's broker in the same regards. And so when you go in, you have, an, you have a price that's fair market value, but just hitting at the top end of fair market value. And buyers are also as savvy as you are. So they're gonna come in and they're gonna hit you below the knees thinking that you're in panic mode. 
And so when they do that, you just come back with a full price offer on your house and you say, look, my house is selling for $650,000. I'll give you $645,000 sales price, but I'll give you a $15,000 closing credit and we'll buy down your interest rates so that that way your monthly mortgage payments go down substantially and you have a two point interest rate buy down with that $15,000. And so when you educate the sellers, they sit back and go, wow, so I don't have to pay a 5.64% interest rate. I can pay a 3.64% interest rate that backs up the interest rates to where the market was just a few months ago. And now your buyer sits back, scratches their head and go, you know what? That sounds like a great deal. That's still $20,000 off the, the sales price of the house. So you function based on their emotions. You still hold your comps strong in the area that you're building, developing, or fix and flipping, or whatever you're doing. And you can sell the house at a premium and then give them a buyer's credit, take advantage of what's happening in the market, buy down their interest rates, and then it becomes a win-win situation. So more so now than ever, creative financing and being savvy in the market is super important. This is something that I learned back in the early 2000s when I was just getting into the market and there was a market recession at the time that I started. I was fortunate enough to get be, surround myself around some really good brokers and the exact same tools that existed back in the early 90s still exist today. The problem is people have to go off and dust off the cobwebs, blow off the dust off that toolbox, open it back up again, and take advantage of the tools that have always been right in front of us. They just haven't been utilized for quite some number of years because the market has, has been in the sell in the seller's perspective and in the seller's benefit for all these last nine, 10 years. And now it's time for you as a buyer to blow off the dust on all these tools, learn, understand how these tools work, pull them out of your toolbox and put them back to work. Ladies and gentlemen, click and subscribe, pound that like button, and I look forward to seeing you next time.